Very quickly before the video starts, I'm here at the farmhouse editing it and I noticed I never discussed when the house was built. It was built in sometime around 1920. The courthouse records say 1923, but I have been told that they started building in 1918 and that the first family moved in around 1921. That's just what I've heard. I wanted to point that out there. At some point in the video, I was talking about some of the updates uh, around the 1970s being original. I meant original in the um, in the sense that it was original to the first remodel of the property. So it was built sometime around 1920, and then it looks like the first major remodel was sometime around 1970, give or take. What is going on, everyone? I hope you were all doing well. We are just gonna jump right into the video. There's a lot to go over, and I don't even know where to start, so we're just gonna get it rolling. I'm gonna take you all through the house and show you a lot of the original features. Uh, the antiques, there's a lot of stuff in here, and um, as well as I'll show, you know, kind of repairs that need done and just kind of talk through some stuff. It's a really, it's a lot to take in right now, and um, I closed on the place yesterday, so that little teaser video I put up yesterday, if you didn't see it, you know, that was all filmed and edited, posted same day, you know, spent quite a bit of time, uh, you know, making that and uh, getting it all ready, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited here. And I will say, if the lighting isn't perfect everywhere, uh, it's because I have all the blinds, um, you know, all the blinds closed, and um, I'm not run, I'm turning, I'm not turning on a lot of lights um, because it's still in like the 90s here, and this house doesn't have central air conditioning. Um, there's just a few old window units that aren't in right now, and even if they were in, I really wouldn't want to use them. So. Um, yeah, that out of the way, for those of you who were more interested in the metal detecting and like what, what some people would call the real treasure hunting uh, on the property, that'll be on the way. I'm just going to have to wait a little bit on that because it's we haven't had any significant rainfall here in probably like nearly a month and a half. So we're almost in a drought here in this area of the country and around uh, northeast Tennessee and uh, southwest Virginia. So um, that being said, I'm just going to get you turned around and uh, we're going to start looking at some stuff. So, um, I'm not going to go into like all the stories today. We're just really going to focus on the house and the antiques today, and just give you. This is going to be more of a tour video, and I'm just going to I'm just going to talk it out because after I make this video or during, maybe in between, I just got to start categorizing some of the stuff and getting getting it put away in the closet so I can prepare to do some of the work that I'm going to do. Uh, but for now, we're just going to browse through. So this is the, uh, as far as I know, this is the only room in the house that is an addition. I have no idea yet when it was built. I have to do a little more, um, you know, figuring out to find out when this addition was built. So this is just kind of like a back uh, utility room uh, where they have the washer and dryer. I'm assuming they built it for this purpose. Uh, because maybe prior to when this addition was here, they had to go in the basement, which is uh, not very nice, you know, completely unfinished basement, uh, you know, not very high clearance and uh, very difficult to get down steps. So it's possible that, you know, they built this addition uh, to remedy that. I do know that this home was only two owners and um, uh, they, the, the last owner, uh, owners, I should say, purchased it in 1990, uh, I can't remember exactly, I think 94, something like that, either sometime between 1994 and 1996. Um, so this is the only, um, this is the only room in the house, and also, of course, the deck was built on and back there off the addition. So this is the only room in the house that actually has uh, updated vinyl windows. All the rest are original and they're all going to need replaced. So in here, there's just a lot of stuff. You're gonna see a lot of lights like this. Uh, the gentleman that used to live here um, was actually a producer and uh, I'll get into that another time. It's a pretty interesting story. He, um, he lived in California for a while and uh, ended up in Hawaii and even did some work uh, for National Geographic, so uh, it's a pretty interesting place and right up my alley because uh, you would consider me like a, a more amateur producer if you can even consider a blogger and someone who makes, you know, semi-edited videos, you know, producer. 
But uh, anyway, so, well, I kind of, you see, you can see him rambling here. So anyway, this is just a, you know, just a, a nice room in the back. It's got the fireplace here, really nice living area. It's in quite good shape too. And the hardwood floors in this, heart, the, in this house are in very good condition. And I like this in this little uh, area between the kitchen and that living space. There's some old lockers, which I just think are super cool tucked back in there. It's just, it's just really awesome. I might repaint them. I'm not, I'm not big on this sort of almost salmon color, but um, there's still a lot of stuff in here and supplies as well. Uh, mostly kitchen related items. But, um, I, pu I purchased the home uh, with all the remaining contents inside. So it's, it's quite, the, quite the adventure here. And we'll get into that another day. But uh, just really awesome. So into the kitchen. So I will say, I mean, obviously, as you can see, the house is livable. And the gentleman lived in here up to up till the recent past, um, you know, a few months ago. It's definitely livable. And the inside of the house is actually in quite good condition. A lot of the repairs that need done, it just needs updated more. There's a, a lot of original stuff from the 70s. You know, it's going to need plumbing work, uh, electrical work. It's a lot of the unseen stuff. So it's, you know, it's, it's more unseen. I mean, as far as the inside, it was maintained quite well and has a lot of the original features. And also the exterior of the house is in, uh, I wouldn't say poor condition, but definitely needs a facelift. It needs scraped down, repainted, a little bit of rot removed, but not bad. Uh, but anyway, uh, the kitchen here, you can tell some of the appliances are, are even newer. It's just kind of a, a, a mix. Uh, it's, it's a mix of everything in this house. And you know, you go from a lot of super old stuff from the 70s right to a, you know, a stainless steel fridge. Um, but the kitchen is, you know, it's really nice. You know, the custom cabinets, you know, not high-end or anything, but uh, just, you know, really well done. So, you know, it's going to be a decision I have to make. You know, do I want to take out something that's functional and update it, you know, and get rid of, you know, like laminate and put in a more expensive sink? You know, what do I want to do or do I want to utilize, you know, what's not broken? These are the questions I have to ask myself. I'm not the type of person uh, that likes to just go in like a lot of uh, you know homeowners and contractors and they're just like gut everything start over you know sleek and clean I just hate destroying things that still have um, you know utility that's just me I like to repurpose a lot of things and it's not because I you know I of course I like to save money but it's I wouldn't say it's necessarily because I'm cheap um, in that essence because I do I will do a lot of high-end updates because I want to add some uh, a little bit of you know, flair to the property as well. But for me, it's kind of a, a mix of everything and it's it, it takes a long time for me to work through the vision of what I want to do to it. So anyway, uh, you know, I kind of intercepted the property right before an estate sale was going to take place and the remaining stuff in the house that hadn't already been, um, you know, taken by, uh, you know, the owners or um, you know, there was a lot of stuff donated, a lot of some people already bought some stuff, but um, you know, there, there was a lot of stuff left. So you can see here, there's, there's prices, there's prices um, on most of the stuff in the downstairs. And there's just, you know, tables full of it. You know, there's a lot of uh, really cool furniture pieces that I'm super happy uh, to be able to use. I'm going to be repurposing a lot of this. I mean, it's already in the house, you know, I'm going to repurpose it and use a lot of this in the design. So it's going to be really cool. Really like the original built-ins. This is probably one of the best rooms uh, in the house. Just, just amazing. And what I like to do on these, because I don't like the uneven look with the shelving, to add more depth and make it pop more, you know, after I do get a dining table and stuff in here and all that, I will actually maybe leave this one for like kind of depth on the side, leave it open. But what I'll probably do is it re at least remove one of these, um, you know, one of these doors and um, let it more as like an open display. That's just me. Of course, I would never get rid of the, you know, re get rid of them. You know, you, you would save it for, you know, when you want to put them back up, if that's something you'd want to do. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really a lot to take in here. Um, there's just, so much little things and if you watched the you know in the previous video I did on you know kind of the skit 
you know, and I put these in the refrigerator. Um, I don't know how many of you picked up on it. Uh, some people did, you know, that these are old ones I put in there. That's a 75th anniversary for Coca-Cola, uh, 1977. It's still in there. I thought that was pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, but anyway, going what is in, you know, the main uh, living area here and just I, I, I don't I don't know what to say. It's just awesome. This place has got um, It's a minimum of 11 foot ceilings and You lose space upstairs in the attic, but I mean who really cares right the downstairs is just awesome It's gonna look really good uh, Really good fixed up now uh, the walls aren't in bad shape. It does need quite a bit of patchwork um, It's the old lap and plaster. I don't know if you can you can probably see it on camera you can see it set in behind. The paint doesn't cover it real well. You can see all the lines um, from the boards running through. Get up a little closer. You can kind of see it there. If I can see it through the viewfinder, I think you all will be able to see it. But it was maintained somewhat over the years. You can see there's a lot of patchwork done. But uh, just a really, really awesome place. And uh, I think it's, I think fixed up, it's gonna look absolutely amazing. This is personally one of my favorite rooms with this built-in bookshelf that gives it that sort of library feel. And that's a lot of books to go through. I'm sure I'll be reading through some of them as well. You got the old butter churn. It's a lot of neat stuff in here. And this is actually one of my one of the pieces I'm really excited about. And um, you can see it marked on here, Victorian Canewood Coat Rack Shelf, circa 1900. And um, a lot of the prices that were put on these, um, uh, there was uh, a you know, motivation to sell um, because the owners lived in California. So they were really just trying to uh, price everything to sell very quickly. So there's actually a lot of things in here with the stickers, you know, on them that they priced well below the value and I can even tell some of the furniture pieces are priced ridiculously low. Like ones that if I didn't buy this property, I would have come in and bought some of the stuff myself um, because there's just a lot of cool stuff in here. And um, it's hard to get, you know, it's hard to get antiques at a good price unless you're, you know, a real, a real scavenger and someone who's always going to, you know, estate sales and, and you know, outdoor and doing outdoor thrifting and stuff like that. Um, so of course, being an old house, um, let's do, do this here. It's a little bit quirky. There's a lot of really interesting. Like this is like between the rooms. There's like this foot and a half gap with a door. I don't even know what the purpose, you know, how this place was originally configured. Just very uh, bizarre almost. And it leads into this room here, which is technically the master bedroom, which is a little bit strange of a configuration because you have a room, you know, off the side of it there that's used as an office. And then you have, um, you know, you have like closet there. You got the door here, <laughs> the door here. It's just a little bit odd. Um, but hey, you know, I'll, I'll figure out what to do with it. But there's just a lot more stuff in here. Um, and I will say there's a Swedish heritage in the family. So there's actually a lot of items uh, and stuff here that is uh, Swedish. You can even see on this box. Um, just wood figures, you know, some, some toys, uh, some wooden utensils and books like this. But yeah, there's quite a, a lot of Swedish items uh, here in the house. And uh, a lot more, yeah, I think that's a, that's an advent thing. Just all kinds of stuff. I mean, I'm not gonna dig through everything now. Um, there's a lot of, some of it's not, an, you know, more antique. There's a lot of stuff here from, you know, like the, the 90s, a lot of old electronics and stuff like that. You know, VHS players, that type of thing. Um, so, and you can see just a bunch of luggage there. But then you, you, you saw this room in my little teaser yesterday. Um, it, you know, just it, it's his office. 
and um, you yeah, see I threw my metal detector there. Um, but I mean, it, it's, there's almost everything still in it. And um, the gentleman that lived here was super organized, everything, I mean, he literally had every instruction manual from probably everything he ever bought in almost nearly his entire life. I'm not joking about that, and I'll show you what I mean in a future video uh, because I got some really special and interesting stuff to show. Um, so they just took uh, his uh, the, his computer tower and took any information they needed and then destroyed it, um, partly because some of the, uh, the stuff uh, that he, um, he had, um, he actually owned the copyright to some things that were sold to, you know, uh, even Lucas Films way back in the day, and that's a, a story for another day. So uh, they wanted to make sure they destroyed some of the um, any copyrighted material that somebody could, you know, kind of like try to utilize and you know monetize. Um, but yeah, that's just part of it. You know, he even had, you know, the two different clocks there on East Coast and West Coast time. He had a lot of clocks in this house. He definitely liked them. So check out this kind of, like going back to the weird configuration, how this is an office now. So there's like this closet right here and there is no light in there. So I apologize for that or I would turn it on. You got like an iron board, ironing board and some coat hangers and different stuff like that and shelving. And you walk in here, push open this door. Let me get the light here push open that door <laughs> and voila, you're in the main downstairs bathroom. So uh, this is the main bath of the house. This sink's blocked up and this is probably uh, one of the worst things in the house. The bathrooms are gonna need you know, quite a bit of remodeling. Um, at some point, I don't know if the toilet overflowed or if there were other issues, but this is completely sunken in and um, rotted out. It's actually actively wet right here. So there's a lot of, there's something going on there that is not good. That's one of the things I'm gonna to have to have addressed right away. Um, all the floor is gonna need pulled up in here. Is sort of the old ceramic tub. Might salvage that. I mean, they don't make them good like that anymore. It's in a decent condition. Uh, it just needs cleaned. Uh, it's, it's highly probable that all this tile is going to um, get torn out and you know the vanity and stuff. This bathroom, will probably turn out into mostly a gut job. And this here is one of the only areas in the center that's not original hardwood. This is just like a, you know, a laminate that's made to look like hardwood, hardwood. And obviously, well, I'm not sure what's under the the old carpet in here and into the office. All that's going to get torn out for sure, uh, not in good condition. And then all the other rooms that I showed are original hardwood. And as you can see, it comes back out here. So <laughs> kind of weird configuration uh, downstairs. And I'm gonna, I'll take you guys upstairs now. I'm assuming they put in these doors um, right here to probably, you know, keep, uh, you know, keep the, you know, kind of keep it more climate controlled. Keep all the cold air from, you know, escaping upstairs in the summer and keep it, you know, keeping, yeah, just keeping it more climate controlled, but old carpeted steps which are obviously it's all gonna go all the carpeting's gotta go and and now we come upstairs where I'm gonna show you all a lot more of the stuff that's up here and this is kinda crazy right step right back into the 70s crazy Almost everything with these old ins the, these old you know bathrooms in the 70s, you either had like the yellow, the mint green, um, or some people even did pink. And there was it was just I've, I've even seen blue, but this yellow color was actually pretty popular. But I mean, apart from needing cleaned, it's like almost this stuff was barely used since the 70s. I mean, all the tile. There's not like. I, I mean, I have to look closer, but I haven't seen a single crack in one of the tiles. It's, it's unbelievable. It still has the matching toilet. Um, just, hey, it's just, just, just crazy. I've even thrown around the idea of like cleaning up this bathroom, like kind of repainting around this area and leaving some of this, you know, kind of, or, or maybe replacing the vanity 
you know, in the toilet, but I don't know, like this this laminate from like the 70s, it's it's like in such remarkably good condition. I actually like the pattern of this. You know, I generally don't like a lot of the style and stuff from that era, but I'd actually consider repurposing it and using that floor and doing like really high end, uh, you know, like doing like a high end vanity and something cool with it. I don't know, but it's quite interesting. So, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff here. Like this is an old uh, shoe shining kit. I already looked at this before. It's got everything in there, the rags, the, the polish, brushes, you name it, it's in there. Just kind of, you know, bed sheets and linens and stuff like that. Just all sorts of stuff. Clothing. In here, it's kind of a little more of the same. Just pretty much, you know, linens, pillows. That's a pretty cool furniture piece. I'm not certain, but I, I don't, that doesn't look like super antique to me. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not the most knowledgeable in furniture. That might be around 70s-ish as well there. I don't think this furniture set in here. I guess that goes with it, but not super old. Under there is just kind of, you know, attic space that's unfinished, you could really, you could finish it and turn it into more closet space. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, this house is actually fairly large. There's some discrepancy on the square footage, but between the downstairs and the upstairs of the main living space, it's somewhere around 2,800 square feet. So you can imagine if this place, I mean, it's gonna cost a lot of money to up update all the windows, um, but when I do, it's gonna really give it a facelift. I mean, they're all original like that. Moving in here, you know, the turntable, just all kind of stuff. And a lot of it is, you know, decent, decent quality, you know, items and trinkets as well. It's just, it's not all junk. It's definitely not all junk. There's a lot of really cool stuff in here, especially downstairs where the more antique stuff is. You know, bag of golf balls there. Oh, there you go. That's pretty interesting. I'll have to, no, I don't think that's, that's not gonna be sterling silver wrapped. We'll double check everything later, but there's a lot of, a lot of cigar boxes and stuff as well. And there you go, there's a whole box of the National Geographic magazines. A lot of VHS players and stuff like that. Knickknacks. You know, I, I, I haven't even looked through everything myself yet. There's just, there's just so much here. These, I think one of my older cousins had when I was growing up. Pretty sure those are probably collectible now. They don't even look like they've ever been used. Some board games, but yeah, it's, you know, it's a large place and this entire attic space has been, been finished now. I mean, there's some stuff going on with these, a lot of old water damage up and through here, some, you know, so a lot of cracks in the plaster and stuff. But um, it's, it's not bad. It is definitely not bad. You can see even some of these light fixtures. Check that out. I mean, my goodness. You've been up there for so long. But uh, yeah, a lot of cracks that need to be taken care of, but it's, it's nothing major. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. This is where he has a lot of his uh, equipment from being a producer. Let me turn this light on here and show you the collection of DVDs. Made these build-ins in this sort of closet area. Just, <laughs> I mean, there's so many of them. I really don't even know what to say. And he, like I said, he was a, an extremely organized person. He had a label printer and all sorts of stuff. Everything is numbered in the collection. I mean, it's, I thought I was organized. I mean, I definitely don't have anything on him, but uh, that's sort of like his little DVD den. And over here, all sorts of electrical items. 
and equipment. This <laughs> box is full of office stuff. And let me find a light in here. Now, some of the more expensive stuff that I would have loved to have in here was already sold. There was like an old reel-to-reel -reel and a lot of old valuable vintage film-related um, equipment, which would have been cool to have. But there, you know, are, there are some things remaining here. And everything is just labeled. Every box. Old Logitech joysticks. It's just, it, you know, the old, the old lighting. And there's this closet here. I think, yeah, there's a light on. I can turn on here. Oh, if I can do that turn. <laughs> it's one of the lights that has a switch. You have to turn it there. Come on, there we go. And this is another you know, buildings with the closet, all of the old film, and all of this sort of cases to keep everything in, with combination locks on them. Didn't even open any of these yet. Some of these don't have anything in them. It's just crazy. Empty take up reel. Huh. But yeah, just VHS tapes and more DVDs. Crazy. So I'll go ahead and turn this off. Like I said, I'm not going in depth on any, everything now. I just wanted to give you an overall. Those are all boxes of VHS tapes, every single one of them right there. But it's really cool to be able to repurpose, uh, you know, some of these uh, these old lights for, you know, like the YouTube videos for lighting and stuff. I've I've thrown around the idea of trying to keep uh, stay real to the original theme of some of the rooms in the house, like this, and make it sort of like a production room, and maybe paint like a green screen, you know, for one of the walls. Take one of the walls where I could stand in front of and make a green screen out of it for productions and kind of. Uh, modernize the the studio. I, I you know I thought it'd be cool to do that. I'm not sure if I will yet, but I've at least thrown that idea around. Oh yeah, that box here I opened before. It just says peanuts. Some of it just empty with packaging peanuts. You know, but I haven't even I haven't even opened every drawer and everything we got here. Audio recording items, miscellaneous audio, um, audio items, just all sorts of stuff. It's going to take me a long time to go through it all, but hey, that's half the fun. And there's another light, one of them antique light fixtures, which is <laughs> one of the reasons I know too that the electrical is going to need a lot of work. A lot of it hasn't been touched, I can tell, since at least the 70s probably on the electrical. Seems like this house had a pretty extensive remodel sometime around the 1970s. So, you know, that's not horrible, but obviously there's a lot of updates that need done. But at least it's not like knob and tube and all that craziness. So, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it could be worse, but it definitely could be better. And yeah, that's it. The upstairs here kind of pans around that way and makes a big circle. Comes around here and pops out here. Pretty interesting layout. Um, I don't know technically how many bedrooms you can call it because I know if it doesn't have a closet, you can't call it a bedroom. So I think the way they broke it down, if I remember correctly, was just the one master on the main. So it was one bedroom downstairs. And then this here, this is just a little tiny room with a closet. And that's definitely not a bedroom. I don't even know, you know what you would call that, but you have bedroom here. Um, <laughs> this doesn't really have a closet. You know, and this is just small in here. But it does have a little that attic space that you could finish. So you would definitely say that in there is, even though it's an office and at least the one over there. So probably, I mean, you easily call it three bedrooms, but it wouldn't be any more than four. 
just depending on if I reconfigured it, knocked out any walls, tried to, you know, uh, tried to add a closet, figure out how to, how to do it. So there may be some things that get shifted around and reconfigured upstairs there. We will see. We will see. So looking at one of the top shelves, you can see a book. It's a collection of, uh, um, of Mark Twain. And I think it was Mark Twain that said something like, there comes a time in every rightly constructed boy's life, uh, the need to search for buried treasure. Something on the lines of that. I completely just paraphrased and went off of memory. I'm pretty sure that that was Mark Twain. It's one of his quotes that I liked. But, yeah, there's a lot of books and stuff to go through. These old cameras are just really awesome as well. So much stuff here. Not even sure what that is. I have to open that later. Get this one as well. Yeah, some of this stuff, I mean, that is heavy. That weighs more than a brick. But yep, a lot of production equipment, that is for sure. Be cool if I could fix up some of this stuff and utilize it. Wouldn't that be awesome? That'd be pretty cool. We got down here. Oh yeah, it's just like an looks like an old camera case. Oh yeah. <laughs> Kodak. Oh wow. I did not even know this was here. I told you I, I haven't even scratched the surface on digging through all this yet. I'm intrigued to say the least. To say the very least. <laughs> what do we got over here? More Kodak. It's probably a lens or something there. Wow. Now I know that's older for sure. What do we got here? Exposure meter, Photo Research Corporation, Hollywood, California. See, in this house, there's a lot of things from California, uh, Hawaii, which is where he lived for a while, and then, of course, the Swedish stuff as well. So, uh, quite the interesting mix. Old drafting uh, table over there, drafting desk. Definitely be able to utilize that. A lot of cool stuff in here. Can't wait to repurpose all of it. There are so many possibilities. So I am very excited about this discovery. When I purchased the house, it happened so quick. And when we made an agreement for me to purchase all the contents, I didn't even come close to looking at everything. I had even found another room in the garage that I wasn't even aware of was there. <laughs> so, I mean, this happened very quickly. This is probably my favorite find so far. This is what appears to be an antique safe that weighs an absolute ton. So, I'll just go ahead and show you here. It has the key in it, and naturally I didn't think, you know, that there would be anything in it, because a lot of the stuff on the property has already been, uh, you know, checked already, but, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of surprises that are unknown, but, um, check it out. You know, there is even a, some sort of logo there, and I can't quite make it out. When I play the video back, I'll be able to uh, decipher it to find out what brand it is, so I know about how old it is. I'm sure somebody probably already knows by looking at that there, but man, this thing is reinforced. Uh, it is absolutely no joke. Absolutely no joke at all. And it's even a little bit stylized too. It's even the little handle on it. It's got like a little heart design running all around it. But you can tell it's been weathered quite a bit. But it's still in great shape. You know, the hinges are solid. Just really cool. This is probably something I'll keep. Maybe I'll put some of my more valuable metal detecting finds in it. And you know, her, you know, more antique -y stuff. And it'll be kind of like a 
a safe full of valuable antiques. I think that'd be pretty cool, the stuff that I don't plan on selling. I think that's really awesome. So anyhow, I found this uh, scale in the house that uh, still works. <laughs> I had tested it by standing on it myself. You can see there, I weigh like 138-ish. The scale's off a little bit, um, but let's, uh, I'm gonna try to set this on there and uh, we'll see how much it weighs. <laughs> you can see how heavy it is. Like I said, that's just a lid, that's no joke. But I wasn't even thinking about this. Can't do this while I'm holding the camera. So let me get my tripod set up and I will lug that onto the scale and we'll see what it weighs. I can't find my tripod. I think it's in the house here somewhere, but I was toting it around before. So I have no idea where it's at. So you're just gonna sit on the floor for a second. But there's the scale here. <sighs> Get that kind of on the middle there, except try not to cover the reading on it. And let's make sure. Yeah, this scale's not perfectly accurate. So if I push down on it a little more, it goes up a couple pounds. But uh, yeah, it's kind of generally right about there. So when you take a look at it there, it is about 55 pounds. Not too shabby. That is one solid safe right there. Without the handles, that would be really awkward to carry, so I'm glad those are in good shape. Very solid. Not going anywhere. Yep. All right. Moving on. And also, in talking to the daughter of the gentleman who used to live here, apparently he did try to supplement income and uh, figuring out how to make some money by selling some stuff on eBay. Uh, she did tell me that, and I did find a, a box here that uh, is marked, marked current eBay items. So I guess it, I guess he at some point had this some of this stuff listed on eBay, eBay and it didn't sell. A little top from Hawaii. It's kind of more trinket type stuff in here. Island Creek Coal Company. That's kind of interesting. Oh, it's like a coaster. Yeah, old matchbooks. A watch in there. Now, I obviously don't know if other things got thrown in here and what got taken out and whatnot, but uh, all I did notice that th this box was marked active eBay items. Oh, that's another one of the coasters. What is this? The Pearl Harbor Collection. Actually got some stories for you guys about uh, Pearl Harbor and some of his work. Basket. There you go. Now those I don't like. I do not like clowns. hand-painted duck. All kinds of little knickknacks, that's for sure. Like I said, I haven't even, there you go. So much digging to do. So I didn't even show you all the workshop. We'll leave that for another day. Um, it used to be a like a garage apartment sometime in the uh, distant past. Um, and it's in terrible, terrible condition now. It's not bad enough that it needs torn down, but if I did decide to make it into an apartment again, it would be a complete gut start over, you know, tons of rot, uh, just absolute gut job. We'll just put it like that. But to show you, uh, give you an idea, he was a, a woodworker as well, and the shop is full of all sorts of different types of tools and lawn equipment, you name it. There's a ton of stuff in there. So I know that he actually made this here, which is, I mean, personally, it's not up my alley. I don't, I don't like this type of thing. Um, so I don't want to show you like, and there was, I think a different head to it as well. You could swap out different heads on it. And um, I'm not going to show you all. I'm just going to like read it off the bottom because it has his name on it, which I'm trying to keep uh, private at the moment. But he calls the, this was called alien and he put his label on it 
and uh, when he made it, he made it in 2013, and it says, based on an idea from Third from the Sun, Twilight Zone episode, episode 14, 1-8-1960. So he made this in uh, 2013. He did um, a lot of woodworking. So I'm probably going to leave the video off here. It's just <laughs> a little bit overwhelming trying to uh, go through this all. and I, uh, Overwhelming in a good way. It's just my brain is uh, twisted in so many different directions. Um, I'll probably just wander around here cluelessly for the next few days until I decide how I want to start tackling all this. Um, today I'll probably just start taking some of the, uh, um, I'll just start putting a lot of uh, stuff for now uh, that I'm not sure what I'm doing with in the closets. Try to open up the space more so I can get more of a vision for what I want to do with the house itself. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time. So, you know, I'll be going through getting rid of all of the, uh, the, the trashy stuff and, you know, probably donating a lot of, a lot of items that I, that I don't need to clear up space. Um, you know, like, you know, old linens and probably uh, different stuff like that. Um, I do have a lot of cleaning to do. I need to start, uh, oh, I didn't show you in this tour. You saw in my, uh, my little teaser yesterday, uh, off the kitchen here, the basement's down there. Uh, the basement's in, in decent, it's in good shape. I know there's no major foundation issues. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that down there, that there were, that there's no major problems down there as far as like the, the house is concerned. Little bit of a water issue, doesn't seem horrible. Um, but then again, it's dry right now, so I'll have to really inspect that after we get some um, major rainfall. But there's a few, uh, there's some, there's a little bit of black mold down there, um, just from there being some uh, wood down there and a lot of cardboard that's been down there for way too long. I think if I get all of the items out there that have the mold on them, I didn't see it on the walls, it's just in like the cardboard and stuff like that that has been saturated for a long time. So, I don't think that's a major issue, but what the where the major money is going to go into this house is is number one uh, the windows. The windows are absolutely massive, and most of them are original and in bad shape. So if I replace replace the windows, um, you're probably going to be talking, you're pro probably going to be pushing uh, ten grand on windows, and um, uh, I'd have to decide what I want to do with the uh, the heating. Uh, and the cooling right now, like I said, it's, you just have to, there was just a few window units in here for cooling. And then the heat is, uh, it's oil heat, which is kind of uncommon for this area. It's normally uh, common, uh, you know, the further north you go. And it, it's, it's only to the downstairs. So there is no heating source for the upstairs. He used a lot of space heaters. I'm not sure if you saw in his... Um, uh, kind of production office upstairs and, uh, and around uh, other areas there was a lot of space heaters and especially in a house like this that has that hasn't had a lot of, a lot of electrical updates um, and stuff like that you know I would say it's quite risky to go crazy on the space heaters so if I decided I wanted to take this entire house and bring it up to the the current day you know, with the with a central heating and cooling system, it's possible I'd even have to use a separate unit for upstairs and downstairs because this is a, quite a large place and there's a ton of potential here. Um, but of course, it's not going to be cheap either if I want to you know bring it fully up to date. So I mean, I, I would be assuming if I wanted to do the heating and cooling, you know, two separate systems, run you know uh, you know duct work and all that through the upstairs and I'll put it in each and every room. That's going to be an expensive job. I mean, to do to do both floors, start the upstairs from scratch, and uh, do it all. We're probably talking ten grand there as well. So uh, that's that's probably the major stuff. And uh, the plumbing and the electric the electrical stuff like that. I don't think it's going to be anything absolutely crazy. Although a lot of it needs done. So I would say the biggest expenses in this place um, are probably going to be, uh, you know, based on the the heating and cooling. And the windows; those are probably the two major expenses, apart from the gutted uh, workshop. If I want to redo that apartment, it's possible I could just leave it as, uh, you know, workshop space and not touch it. I'll have to make that decision down the road. So anyway, I thank you all for watching. I'm going to end it here. I hope you enjoyed the video. There's going to be a lot on the way. Um, I know this wasn't like a, probably the most exciting video, kind of laid back and vlog style, but I I know a lot of you enjoy this. 
Uh, so I wanted to take my time and just go over a lot of different stuff. So from there, I will see you on the next one. Take care, guys.